I came from a third generation welfare recipient family. My family had never made a mark and I've searched back 500 years. I had uh, four fathers and two mothers. Most of my relatives had free board and lodgings with King George VI. That meant they were in jail. I've uh, never gone through formal schooling. I've never had the disadvantage of going to university. <laughs> At 26 years of age, I was an illiterate bricklayer and stonemason. I had great problems in articulation, great problems in comprehension. I went to school as a normal child goes to school, but I went very late. I was much older than the other children. I had come out of hospital after suffering the debilitating disease called diphtheria, and I was skinny and weak, and they tried to do some educational assessment on me. And they said, this kid, he's just one brick short of a load. He's not playing with a full deck. His elevator doesn't go to the top floor. And they were going to put me with a group of brain-damaged children called an opportunity class. Until along came a teacher called Miss Phillips. She would make the Rock of Gibraltar look like a marshmallow. Uh, I, she, I've often thought in retrospect that she could kickstart a jumbo jet. <laughs> with her left leg. And a shoe off. She would make the Rock of Gibraltar look like a marshmallow. And uh, she said, he's not brain damaged, he's just plain stupid. And for three years she punched me, she kicked me, she slapped me, she didn't get any sense into me or out of me. She used to get me by the chin and rattle my teeth and say, Peter Daniels, you're a bad, bad boy and you're never going to amount to anything. And that became a self-fulfilling prophecy. At 26 years of age, I was a bricklayer, stonemason, hopelessly in debt. But on May the 25th, 1959, I went along to a Billy Graham crusade in Adelaide, South Australia, where we live. And when I heard the gospel in clear terms for the first time, I suddenly realized I was equal with all men before God, and I reasoned that if I was equal with all men before God, I no need to accept any quality with anyone. I was a son of a king. And I wish you could know the difference that that makes. Well, I suddenly didn't become intellectually brilliant, but I knew that I knew that I knew that something had happened. And someone took hold of the book of Joel and read these words, I will restore unto you the years the locust has eaten. And I wanted that restoration, but what if you come from the other side of the tracks? What if nobody is interested in you and then God gives you two dreams so big you can hardly comprehend it? How do you handle it? Well, I wrote it on the back of a cereal package. Everything I had to have done by my 85th birthday before I moved into second gear. One of the dreams was to see how much money one human being could give away in their lifetime. Now I'm not talking about being ordinarily poor. We had to reach up to touch bottom. How do you handle that? Well, I found the best helping hand you can get is the one at the end of your own arm. And I went down and I, I bought three dictionaries. I put one next to my bed. I put one in the toilet. That's a good place to read. And I put one in my excuse for a motor car. Now, I need to tell you about this motor car. This was a 1937 Ford V8 Clubman sedan that had been rolled three times. The hood was crushed in. The windows were gone. We'd kept the doors on with wire. It wasn't the cost of the gasoline that bothered me, it was how much oil this confounded thing used. I drove it very carefully, I could get 14 miles to the gallon of oil. I used to purchase second-hand sump oil and keep it in the trunk with a plug spanner. And, and uh, if anyone showed any disrespect for my motor car, I would stop it in the middle of the traffic. I'd let a bank up. They would swear at me, they would shake their fists, they'd hit their horns, I'd just sit there. You can't move me. When it was all backed up, I'd put my foot on the clutch and slap it on the accelerator and I would baptize them in oil.
I kept pointing to words in dictionaries and getting people to tell me what they meant and then I'd check with two or three other people to make sure the first one told me the truth. You've seen Crocodiles Dundee, Australians are great kidders. Wherever I go around the world people say, what are Australians like? Well, we're a very balanced people, we have a chip on each shoulder. <laughs> well, I started pointing to words in dictionaries and getting people to correct me. Then I'd check with two or three other people to make sure the first one told me the truth. I went through those dictionaries frontwards and then backwards until I understood every single word. Then I read 2,000 biographies. I haven't got polygrip, I said 2,000. Then I studied law, accountancy, philosophy, theology, modern ancient history, politics and economics. I found the mind was like a muscle and it could be developed. And then I went into business. Lost everything. I want to tell you, that'll clear your sinuses. <laughs> I paid it back and went into business again. Lost it again. I mean, you learn nothing new from the second kick from a horse. I paid it back. I was going in the business the third time. My wife said to me, Peter, just get a job. <laughs> just get an ordinary job. Be a garbage collector, anything. Just get a job. Just have some regular money coming in. She said, uh, Peter, the winter's coming. Peter Jr. needs shoes for school and, and Graham needs a sweater and I'm pregnant again. And you've spent all this money on books. I can't see anything happening. You take three steps forward and four steps backwards. She said, I can't see anything happening. On our 33rd wedding anniversary, I bought a beautiful necklace. I mean, it was 49 carat opal with 33 diamonds on This thing's so big, when she walks, she has to walk like this. <laughs> I said, you haven't complained about the books and tapes I bought lately. <laughs> but I, I, went, I paid it back the second time, went into business the third time and lost it again. What do you do when your dreams start to fade? You reach for one more dream. We should never give up, let up or shut up until God takes us up. Well, I went into business a third time and lost it again. Paid it back and went into business a fourth time and built one of the largest real estate corporations of its kind in our nation with offices in Singapore and Hong Kong. We sold those out many years ago. Today, our business interests spread almost around the entire world. We're very unusual in business. We have no overdrafts. No loans, no mortgages anywhere in the world. We've never been sued. We've never sued anyone. Um, we are the only corporation on the face of the earth that has its own private currency. We're the only family in the world that has its own private bullion bank called Anglo Far East Bullion Company. Now, my mind works a little bit different. Because I've never ever gone through formal schooling, according to psychologists and, and others, they say you have a very different mind, you can read eight books at a time. Uh, and uh, would you believe, a Texan paid me one million dollars for 15 minutes advice. He made 120 million. You're not that smart. I really only took 10 minutes, but I say 15 minutes because yeah, it sounds better. An Australian company paid me a million dollars for advice. About eight years ago, we did two films on economics. We contested it against 1,600 other major corporations in the world at the Video and Film Festival in Chicago, including General Motors, Ford, Mercedes-Benz, Boeing. We won. We won the gold for directorship and the silver for content, and it was on biblical economics. It took us to the top 10% of advisors in the entire world on economics. Now I'm your wake-up call. I'm not coming back. I come once. Tomorrow night I'm going to show you how to go into business and win every single time. I'm tired of Christians being broke. You stay in a job. You know what job stands for? Just over broke. It's time for you to take back the economics. It's time for you to stop being employment fodder, suffocating in the amorphous glob of sameness.